Hi there. We're going to be exploring um, this Indian elephant. And as you can see, it has some beautiful Indian folk and design motifs on it. Um, this one is not completed, but it gives you an idea of what we're going to be doing with it. And we'll be exploring design um, later on. This will be a part one of the side view of the Indian elephant. And just to kind of talk a little bit about elephants, the giants among present day land mammals are the elephants. They stand nearly 12 feet tall at the shoulders and they may weigh as much as six tons. They are so ponderous that they never lie down, even sleeping on their feet. They may live for more than 40 years. Elephant live in herds although old bulls sometimes live alone. The female is a devoted mother and takes good care of her big baby. The elephant's remarkable trunk is really an elongated snout. The elephant sucks water into its trunk and then sprays it into its mouth. With its trunk, it can also reach high into trees to pull down branches, and the trunk is so strong that the elephant can lift logs with it. Yet, um, you can see the difference between the African and Indian elephant. And the Indian elephant has one finger on its trunk. Um, you can see here, uh, the African um, has two. Um, uh, the Indian elephant has five nails on its front foot, four on its back. The African, four nails on its front foot and three on its back. So there is some difference. Um, so just a little bit more info on elephants and some fun facts. Um, did you know that elephants will eat up to 500 pounds of vegetation a day and drink up to 40 gallons of water at a time? Um, an elephant can walk faster than a man, maintaining a steady speed of five and a half miles per hour. A herd on the march can easily cover distance of 50 miles a day. And when water is scarce during the dry season, elephants will dig for water uh, in the sandy bed of a river that has stopped flowing. The, the largest tusk ever recorded was 10 feet long and weighed nearly 230 pounds. Um, essentially, uh, it's an animal of open grasslands and adaptable. They live um, enough to live happily in a variety of habitats within its uh, terrain. So lots of fun facts about elephants. This one is more um, in particular about the African elephant but um, do some research. It's really a lot of fun to kind of look into. Now I just was pulling some uh, uh, visuals for you to show you some of the Indian elephants and their um, fancy headdress that they will be um, decorating them with and they wear like a saddle that's beautifully decorated. They may paint their toenails. Um, this is just one example. Uh, <clears throat> uh, here are some patterns that we'll go back to and get some ideas for the design of the elephant's um, headgear uh, and what it, the blanket that he's wearing on his back and for the background. So here's another decorative motif of an Indian elephant. And as you can see, all four legs have been decorated as well as um, the blanket that's on its back and a headdress for this particular elephant. And you'll notice all some of the um, beautiful embroidery motifs um, that you will see uh, in the Indian art. Here's another um, elephant. As you can see, beautifully embellished designs. All four um, ankles, actually, uh, to the legs have a decorative design to them. And on the head and front part of the face. Um, here's another interesting 
designed elephant with someone on, on its back, but um, there's this one has actually some um, neckwear that's decorative as as well as the the um, blanket on its back and the ears as well, and all four legs. Uh, here's another. Uh, these are textile motifs uh, for the elephant. And as you can see, this is on like a pedestal and he's stepping onto uh, another pedestal. But this has more like a saddle and a blanket on it. And it has decorative like pom-poms and tassels on the blanket and a very elaborate um, headgear. Uh, this one is just more geometric design um, from the Kalamakari motif. And uh, these you might find on um, uh, some embroidery that uh, has been done. And just some more interesting designs. No elephant on this one. And then we'll explore more of the designs later on, and I will kind of explain some symbols. Now, the elephant is a, can be sacred and a remover of obstacles. So it's a really interesting history uh, to the Indian elephant. Now, we're going to use a piece of paper seven by 10, inches and I'm going to use a ruler and just um, kind of come like about an inch from the top of the paper and I'm going to be drawing a line from the top and you can use your pencil first I'm using my marker so you can see it better and you're going to draw a line a straight line from side to side okay for this project, we're going to start with um, a marker, pencil, eraser, your ruler, of course. And next time I see you, we're going to be using colored markers for this. So uh, you want to fill up the bottom part of the paper with your elephant. We're going to start from the top and do the headdress on the, the top part of the head that kind of just drapes right in the middle of the forehead. And it's going to start closer to the left side of your paper. Do this in pencil first, then you can go over it in marker. We're going to start with a soft curve line out, and it kind of swoops in and curves out again, and then you're going to stop. So at the end of this, you're going to draw a very short straight line, and underneath you're going to be drawing a circle to create a tassel, and then what looks like the shape of a bell right underneath that circle. So you're going to curve out on each side and you can do like a wavy line at the bottom or you can just go straight across the bottom of your um, curved shape. And we're going to go back up to the top of the circle and we're going to curve up and under. Do another curve up. And then one longer curve under, and you're going to go right to that top line that we've drawn out. Now, we're going to be drawing the ear. It's a rather large ear and fills a, a good part of your paper. So close to the middle of this curve line that we've just drawn, we're going to kind of take a line and go slightly at an angle out for the ear. And it's gonna curve in and curve out again, in and then a short curve downward. So you can see it's a number of curved lines, but very subtle um, till you get to say the middle of this part of your paper. And then we're gonna do the back part of the ear, which has a lot of curves to it. So right at the top, you're gonna to have like a point at the end, and you're gonna curve out slightly, and then curve at the end of that, and then curve out. So you can see that's for the tip of the ear. Then 
right underneath the end of that curve, you're gonna curve under, and we're gonna do a series of the same shape going up to, almost to the top of the ear. So as you can see, it grabs onto this curved line, curves under and up, and then go again right below the end of that line, curve under, and then go up again. And in the middle of that line you've just finished, curve under, and then go up slightly higher. And then you're gonna stop, find um, a little space just below the end of that line, and curve out, and finish up the ear. So. We've got just a, a couple of folds. So right in the front part of the ear, you're gonna draw kind of a curve and then one more uh, shorter one for some folds in the ear. Okay, so in between the forehead and the front part of the ear, we're gonna be drawing the eye. And so we're gonna make just a soft curve under for the top part of the eye. And then you're gonna make, at the end, you're going to take a line and you're going to come down. As you can see there, it kind of looks like a seven that's on its side. And we're going to kind of just go and kind of curve this up just a little bit, kind of round off that edge. And then you're going to take a, a curve up and do the complete outline of the eye. And you can just do a circle inside that and color around the circle so you have a little bit of white showing for the reflection of light. And then we're gonna make just the lower lid, kind of looks like a teardrop, and then go at the end of that eye, kind of curve up slightly. So, okay, so then we're gonna go in front of the eye, kind of touch that line that just curved up and continue um, and make that just slightly longer. Okay, so now we're going to be um, working on the trunk. And the trunk is really close to the side of the tassel. And you're gonna take a curve out and you're gonna to start to take that downward. And then you're gonna just take a little line going in. And there are multiple folds on the trunk. So for instance, on this, um, you can see the folds on the trunk here on this particular um, African elephant. And on that first example that I showed you. So again, it's, it's almost like an accordion, the way the folds just layer on top of each other on both of these elephants. Okay, so going back, you're gonna go and continue a shorter line and curve. So the curves are showing the form of this, the cylindrical trunk to this elephant and draw another line and curve. So we're kind of taking this slowly, curve out. Now, this particular elephant has tusks. Um, they're elongated incisor teeth that continue to grow throughout the elephant's lifetime. So you can see that it does look like a long tooth and we're gonna actually go to the end of that line that we finished and go upward and go the opposite direction forward. So that's the top part of the trunk and we're gonna round the end and then curve under. So it does look like a very long tooth and make a curve line at the end of it. Now, because of perspective, we'll only see a little part of the other trunk on the other side of his um, trunk. So you see a little bit of it. It appears to be shorter, but it's not. That's just the appearance. And you're going to see a little bit of it. 
and this is a profile view, it's a side view. So we're going to continue the trunk, take this down, make soft curved lines coming in for the multiple folds that you'll see on this elephant's trunk. So we're gonna take that almost to the very bottom of our paper, and then you're gonna curve under like it's a hook and take that up. And then we're gonna stop and do the end, which is like a suction part of the trunk. And we're gonna do just a curve to show the inside of it. And then we're gonna backtrack and then do the back part of the trunk. So you can see it's wider at the top and it tapers almost like a tail at the end. And then kind of has some soft curved lines. And then we're gonna go right next to the tusk and then go towards the ear. So you can see it's not at the tip of the ear. You're gonna go slightly up from the tip of the elephant's ear. Now, um, we're gonna do the, the legs. So not at the very tip, but to the left side of the end of the ear, we're gonna start the legs and they're very wide. And you're gonna come down at an angle and you're gonna make it as long as the, um, the, the trunk of the elephant. So we're gonna kind of do the toes and you're gonna make a curved line for one and then curve for the other, the curved line above. And then you're gonna do the heel of the foot which curves out and then it's gonna go up slightly at an angle so that we can have room for the other leg. Okay, so at the end of this line, we're gonna go back up towards the ears. You're gonna again go up at an angle and then you're going to go right towards the tip of the ear. And we're gonna just draw another kind of curve right where these two lines come together. And then we're going to do the uh, rest of the sec second foot. You're gonna extend that out at an angle because the leg is slightly lifted. Curve under and kind of make that into a circle. Curve and make it to a circle right next to it, slightly higher up, and then another curve underneath. And then you're gonna go right to the back of the heel, curve out, and then come in and then just go straight up and stop. And then right below the line that you've just finished, we're gonna make a curve and go right to the edge of our paper to complete the outline of our elephant. Now we're gonna go back up to the tusk and act um, just add a little bit more detail. You're gonna kind of make a curve and it's gonna kind of curve away and up and then just draw another line coming slightly downward. Okay, so, excuse me. Um, on this particular elephant, we're going to, now you could do two ankle bracelets that they're wearing, or you could just do one on one of the legs. So you could add one or two. So um, then we're gonna do the blanket that's on the back of the um, elephant's back. And you're gonna go right, not the middle, further down from the middle. You're gonna just draw a line coming straight down, curve, and then take that and straighten that line and go right to the end of your paper. So you can see you've already got the um, drawing, a two part of your blanket. And then we're gonna add the tassels on the end of the blanket that you had on the um, headdress on his head. So you're gonna space out some circles and then you're gonna draw like what looks like the shape of a bell on the bottom for the tassel. Now the blanket is also um, um, 
harnessed onto the belly. So we're going to just draw a couple of straps that connect the blanket to the bottom of the belly. You may have room for one more tassel. And then another double line for another strap and it'll be very close to the edge of your paper. Okay, now um, you have the outline of your elephant. You're gonna clean it up with some, uh, with your eraser, clean up any pencil lines that you might see. Actually, I could add a few more. curve lines on the trunk. Okay. And let's start to erase and clean this up. So hold it down with one hand while you erase so that you don't um, crumble your paper and crease it. Okay, so simple, simple outline. Now, if you wanted, you could draw another part of a border on the bottom going across so that you've got this kind of in between two lines. So let's try doing that. Well, you take our ruler and we'll go right up underneath the foot and the trunk. And I wanna make sure that it's even with the bottom. Hold it down and then draw your line going straight across. So what you have is a wider borderline at the top and you could do a design um, inside that, which could be very simple. And then you have the shorter borderline at the bottom. Now let's kind of talk about just adding a little bit of detail before we stop for this class. On the tassels, what you could do, you could use a skinnier marker, you could use the same Sharpie that we're using to outline our elephant. So we're adding some kind of detail to show some texture on our tassels. So you can draw some lines running through the bottom bell shape of your tassels. Okay, and you could start kind of thinking about maybe doing a border within this bracelet that our elephant, and you could make it wider or you could make it thinner by drawing two border lines on the inside of those two outlines, and then perhaps drawing very simple pattern, maybe an oval. You can do zigzags, you could do stripes, make it simple. And then let's do the headdress before we stop for today. And um, again, making a border um, only enhances the design, I think. So you could kind of just follow the same direction as the outline of the headdress that the elephant is wearing. You could continue doing that um, as you go up. Uh, that's a thought. And then do perhaps a pattern just above it. So you could kind of maybe create some interesting patterns just above these lines that continue um, from the bottom of the headdress. You could do some wavy lines. And we'll talk a little bit more um, in detail about some of the patterns that are very popular, especially um, the pattern that's, um, that we know of as a paisley. 
which uh, originated in in India. So um, we will continue the rest of this next week. Um, and I just want you, if you want to do some research on some of the Indian elephants, that would be great. That you could learn more about them. And um, then we're going to start using uh, color next week and also do some more detailed design in the background. Okay, thank you so much. I'll see you next week.